Our next guest is Oliver Boostman, who's the CIO of SAP. Super busy guy, took some time out of his schedule to meet with us and share his, uh, his best practices. Um, Oliver, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice Welcome to, meet to the Cube. Um, have a seat, relax. We're going to ask some easy questions for you, like, <laughs> how the hell do you run a billion dollar business on a tablet? Okay, come on. You know, easy questions. Hard, easy hard, question. hard you know, answer. Right? Uh, your uh, co CEO, Jim Schnabe, was on last night at a yeah. great time. We've had Bill McDermott on the Cube yeah. before. Yeah. Um, and we want to sit down and just have a, a conversation with you about um, sure. some of the things. This is not the can CNBC. You know, you don't have to go to your sound bites, <laughs> but you know, you could you know tell us, share with so us. You saw me at the yeah. NBC press here. Huh? Yeah, so you're getting wired up, the sticking stuff down. <laughs> no, your but we back. know what goes on inside. It's, that's it's that, so that, uncomfortable. That's Very uncomfortable uh, shoot. You get three minutes on the air. Come on. Um, here we want to spend some time with you. So, so the first question is obviously SAP is changing, transforming, yeah. um, pushing life cycles in their, on their software down from you know. A year to six months, maybe faster. Yeah. Changing into cloud mobility, a complete rearchitecture, um, transformation, changing the engine out in the plane in midair. Um, you have to implement all this stuff. I'm sure they, they hand the, the marching orders down. Hey, do, you know, eat, we eat our, eat our own dog food. Can you implement this first? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think you know. I like more drinking my own champagne. You know? It's more <laughs> tasteful, more enjoyable. <laughs> and um, you know, um, with both uh, CEOs, you know, we see. A, a huge amount of innovation coming through, and um, the expectation of, from both of them is um, we have to be our first customer. And uh, so we established this SAP runs SAP in in um, mapping our IT organization, the key guys with the product organization, and see what's on the product roadmap. Uh, can we leverage that um, together with the business? Because there has to be a business value also to do that, and um, try to be. Um, a ramp up customer means six to eight months before general availability. And we did this last time, last year over 25 times. And in certain topics like in memory, we are even alpha. So yeah. we were one of the first one using this in memory. And so there's definitely an expectation also that we are changing the way how we implement. Uh, so we are also going for agile, uh, scrum approaches uh, to yeah. um, go also for a smaller duration instead of uh, uh, 12 months. So that's the same expectation that yeah. uh, Jim has also for the product. Well, SAP is SAP is known in the tech circles, but outside the tech circles, I mean, you guys aren't really well known in the consumer side. Obviously, you're a big brand. You're bigger than Disney on uh, a market cap basis from what I'm, what I'm hearing and seeing. Um, and you're getting the word out. Um, you're essentially talking about a consumer message. What I'm hearing up there, fast, mobile, it's a consumerization kind of mindset. So as an IT guy who has to implement this, you have to be the first guinea pig uh, or drinking your own champagne or drinking your own beer if you're from Germany. Um, you know, so how do you do that? Okay, how do you, and, and, and one, tell us on the operating side, your costs, are they more operating costs? How are you trimming down your op costs? So yeah. this is the challenge of IT, consumerization. Absolutely, I think, I think um, um, First of all, as a CEO of, for, of a high-tech company, you know you have to be part of the, the first mover. Even sometimes you have to uh, figure out, you know, what's the next move is, mm -hmm. um, and then you have to do it fast. In this case, you know, we I already saw we already saw beginning of 2010 with the tablet devices and then also other devices coming in our world from a consumer side. Uh, you have two choices: you can drive that, drive the implementation, drive the discussion, staying on top. Or you you do nothing, and then the the, the the business is bypassing you. There's no question about it because uh, a lot of businesses, our lines of business are so sophisticated that you can buy services, cloud services, or that that could easily um, provide that service. So my recommendation on the consumer side: get ready uh, uh, and think about um, from a mobile strategy point of view. How can I enable consumer devices in the corporate world? And we did this, uh, you know, the iPad, the tablets were ready in, with the European launch in May, end of May. Uh, and then we moved also into, with the acquisition of Cybis, into uh, device management tools uh, to have an end-to-end -end, uh, operation and then also be device agnostic. Yeah. That's another message also for my uh, uh, folks out there is, is uh, there will be no, no only one device, there will be multiple devices. The change of new devices or new devices coming up will even increase. So, um, uh, thinking about how can I enable those consumer devices in a rapid way, but still secure and professional. Yeah. The uh, 
Yeah. Hold on, Dave, one more question. Yeah. So, so IT had, has a scorecard, used to be how many PCs are connected to the desktop, what applications are running. Now with the mobile message, mobile's the new desktop, as Bill yeah. McDermott said. Mobility, the iPad and the iPhone, are great benchmarks for IT because if it can run on an iPhone, if it can run on a tablet, then it's really working. It, but that's hard to do, right? You're going to need virtualization, you need to have good transport, really good low latency app at the edge, basically serving up at the edge. So how do you how do you get there? You guys are showing that message here. How do you make the, the iPad, the iPhone, or Android devices sing like that that well technically? Because that's ultimately like the I, eye candy. I, I, I think, again, my, 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 the first step is, you know, those are consumer devices, you have to manage them end to end. And with the Apple device, Android device, there is no device management there. So security, um, uh, asset management, managing this end-to-end -end is absolutely critical because in the moment you put customer data out there and you, and somebody loses the device, you have a reputation risk. That's number one. Number two is is um, the number one use case for, for tablet devices right now is mobile business intelligence because the, the devices are super for uh, easy access to data, consumption of data, uh, making fast decisions. So we put our critical uh, dashboards uh, on the on the tablet, like you know the whole um, sales pipeline management, opportunity management, financial, etc., so that uh, the decision makers have access to this information. So here is another extension of the story. I so, think that's a home run. I personally, <laughs> just from my editorial yeah. perspective, that I, is the angle. That's, that that is the core issue right now is how do you use the device for business advantage. And, and yeah. people want yeah. to know how, how a little, little bit more detail on how you do that. You've got these legacy applications. Yeah. They don't just run on the iPad. You've, you, you're using new tools, new platforms, so, so I can, new frameworks. I can easy the, the, the quick win for that because um, in our environment we have all our dashboards on business objects, tools, etc. With the business explorer on the, on the iPad and also on the other devices, you can uh, transform those reports in few days and put them on the iPad. That's the quick win because then you have access to business critical information here. So the next level is, and we moved our our CRM system um, uh, with three, ter ter three terabyte of data, 650,000 opportunities into an in-memory uh, appliance. Now there is no restriction anymore uh, um, from a data perspective. You have access to that and analyze here real time, raise my business, and if you see immediately updates, if there's a business close in North America or in Asia, uh, and use this information to drive your resource allocation decision making. So the whole sales management is on that platform and drive that business because they have full visibility, consistent, and have online access everywhere they are. Do you have the equivalent of, of an app store? Are your customers asking for an app store? Yeah, there, there, there are two, two choices. Um, um, number one choice is, is with the Cybers Safari. You have an app store, how to push and pull apps um, or into devices. That's important because a lot of customers um, uh, are restricting access to iTunes. That's number one. The second is you heard today the app store uh, announcement and the business by design. This will be also the app store going forward for mobile apps. So the app store for other software products of SAB going forward. So. When I think of, of the App Store, everybody, of course, you think of Apple and you think of application mm. suppliers like Zynga. Okay, so in this equation, and I wonder what you would advise uh, Shinabe and, and McDermott uh, as a CIO, is SAP or should SAP be the Apple platform? Should it be the Zynga application or both? I think both. I think from, from my perspective, I think there's a huge potential to be the um, iTunes in the enterprise business. And... Um, across the different, but even broader, because you have different categories of, of application, different um, delivery models. So from that perspective, I think there's a huge opportunity there. And in talking to my peers and looking at that, we need more and more also, not only access to those applications, we need also an internal app store for the um, employees to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. And that's something I, I, th I think is a great opportunity. Oliver, what is the most amazing thing that you've done last year? 
the amazing the thing. The most amazing thing you've done in terms of the IT, because you, you're, you're drinking your own beer, you're making beer or champagne, um, you're playing with a lot of technology, and you've got a lot of challenges. I mean, you have to essentially manage, again, you know, the airplane is flying, and you're changing the engine, you're yeah. a guinea pig for all the technology, and you have to report back to the business units. You're a key player in the engine I, I think, of SAP. I think, that, and, and, that, and that's an important learning also for me is, is um, you can be a functional CAO running your business, infrastructure application, managing its vendors, service levels. You can also help to transform the business. But the worst case is you work seven days, 24 hours in the black box and nobody realizes the value. I think the new type of CAO has to be thinking about how can I enable the business to be part of the business. So um, be part of the go-to-market model of SAP to help them drive innovation to be uh, feedback and also share experiences and utilizing social media to interact with different people because if you see follow me on, on Twitter with SAP CIO I have over a thousand people uh, following me uh, I have a blog SAP CIO is SAP your CIO handle. is my Twitter account what's your personal hit or Twitter handle <laughs> I have, I, private uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my pr uh, that's it right that's, that's it, it. Okay. SAP CIO okay. and, and there's also a blog uh, SAP.com slash CIO so um, so, uh, and that's a different way of communication because there is no border yeah. to access, to talk to me, you know, um, customers, employees. Um, and yesterday we reached, yesterday we reached over 120,000 people yesterday on our it's broadcast. Perfect, and perfect. And and this is a new uh, channel. And that's, that's the way to, to communicate. Right, enough. McDermott was talking about reaching 100,000. We said, we're going to reach 100,000. So you double that number. Well, word of mouth. He also <laughs> mentioned, he validated amazing. social media. Some, Blocks also with 100,000 with, uh, with, with folks out, uh, yeah. out of uh, Europe, and I believe. And and by the way, this the tablet. Um, I think my communication behavior as an executive has changed, because it's easy. You know, you as a CEO, you have to understand what are the market trends. You have to, especially in the high tech. And you know, with the apps out there that you can scan 50, 60 uh, RSS feed and scan every night what's going on there. Plus, you follow certain thought uh, a leader uh, on Twitter, what they are sharing about SAP. You can share, comment, and be active out there. So I wouldn't do this my, with my laptop because the integration of social media here is much easier, and I have only yeah. two clicks out there, so it's part of my daily routine. It's a new connected, distributed network. Absolutely. It's, a, it's Absolutely. totally a network. And yeah. the core message that Schnabe was talking about was the collaboration. And that's changing the face of IT. So, I mean, there's a people equation in all this, right? I mean, Absolutely. you have a people equation both on the extraction of knowledge from the marketplace, but internal to IT, there's been kind of a 10-year I don't say cloud around IT, there just haven't been much innovation. And if you've been working in IT for the past 10 years, it's been like do more with less. And also now we've got this renaissance of innovation and people are excited. They're excited about big data, they're excited about what we call fast data, they're excited about mobility, they've got yeah. apps and frameworks. And so there's a huge sea change of mindset. And it's changing the role of the CIO, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. and I think- uh, you know, Share with choices, us your, your no? views on that. Uh, my, my, my first of you is I think you have to be part of that. You have to be in the driver's seat, embrace this. Uh, thinking about um, you know few people in your team that uh, can work on those topics to uh, uh, enable them to play, uh, to utilize that and come back is it working or not, and then go for it. Um, that's that's important. On the other side, um, still I have to manage my um, financials, my um, competitive unit cost, etc. That's a given. So running your your T as a business with a you know business plan. Uh, understanding your financial unit costs, and then at the same time be on top of the innovation, um, and, and be out there and be a strong communicator. Yeah, I yeah. think that's. I the mean, right the whole experimental thing is, is a great message, but the reality is, is I mean, that's good if you're like a, a public cloud and you're you doing you mm -hmm. know DevOps. But if you're running a business and you guys are powering businesses, you can't just say, "Hey, let's just start playing with some of these buttons over here and roll it no, out." I mean, you got security no, issues. Yeah, how do you, ab absolutely. You, I think. How do you handle and, that? And I think I think one one I think one important message also um, you, you can have this ex, you know analytics and, and mobile if you don't have a clean uh, a system of records if you don't have the engine yeah. uh, and Jimmy was absolutely right this morning saying you know you see more garbage faster <laughs> 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 than uh, before because that uh, you know this will this will uh, um, the, the new technology will allow that huh? so so 
foundation, you know, if we would not have this single um, uh, centralized um, ERP system, CRM, uh, HR, um, uh, corporate uh, business warehouse, uh, I would have a challenge today to put all the data in a consistent way out there. So that's something that you, you, you can be thinking about those kind of to, uh, super innovation, but if the foundation is not there from a data, from a way how you handle your uh, system of records, it will be very difficult. So, you know, it used to be, John, that CIO stood for, you know, the old joke, career is over. Okay? <laughs> but we're talking about the new role of the CIO. It's a very dynamic position. It's very dynamic, do yeah. you think, and I know it's not a, a yes or no question, but I'm going to ask it as a yes or no question. Do you think the CIO should report directly to the CEO? I, I think so. I think, especially today with, um, with now the, the innovation coming back. And if you see that um, innovation can really change business models, how you operate, you know, you get more mobile, you can, with the you know, big data, uh, the capabilities, you can also be faster to make decision, predictive analysis. Uh, I think if a CIO understand that, mm -hmm. and that's important, understand the, the power of innovation and IT, and, and then I think a reporting line to the CEO can be very, uh, can be a win-win situation. Do you report to two guys? Is that <laughs> I'm, re I'm reporting to the CEO. Yeah. Uh, of one? SAP, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and he runs also the whole SAP support organization, which is very helpful for me because he can help me also um, if there are any challenges to get activated access to really very good expert to get it solved. So well, I think that's. And, a, that's and I, I, by the way, I think it's the right model too, and I, I don't think you know, I think most CIOs don't report to the CEO. And mm -hmm. then I, I was reading recently that Sony, John, they didn't even have a CISO. Right, and now, of course, but, you know they've you got know, to. So, the, I mean, that's another critical component. Yeah, I think I think the the overall challenge I think is is, um, and this is the reason why I said you have to be out there. You have to be in the driver's seat. That uh, the worst case is that the position of the CEO is downgraded to a lower level. Not right. even reporting anymore to CEO to to the C level more to to um, uh, uh, a business head or whatever, because right. um, if the at the end becoming only an execution function instead of a strategic function. So that's the risk that I see if... if that's a if big risk. It has to be risk. strategic because IT is yeah. going to enable some powerful changes. You saw some of the analytics that you guys are providing, real-time scenario planning as Bill McDermott was pointing out on stage. That's a strategic function. You can't go to the well for that in six months and have an answer. I mean, that's the you old know, data I, warehouse I can model. tell you, you know, um, without that we um, start our infrastructure of the mobility topic in beginning of last year and the experience that we gained um, uh, um, the, the credibility that we got in having this experience has helped also our business to understand and that's something at the end it's a win-win situation. My final question Dave yeah. um, because we have to break and go do a remote uh, in the floor is um, um, Obviously, big data is a big part of the story. Bill McDermott actually said the word big yeah. data, but there's no real big data announcement. We don't hear about Hadoop or anything else. It seems that inherently, you guys are big, doing big data from before big data was big data. I mean, you're handling large amounts of customer data, um, moving into the edge via the mobility and in-memory with the Sybase acquisition. Um, so you got, the, you got this big data. Um, mindset and platform. How has it changed the customer service side of the business or the, the services we call the services angle. Like, because now you have the ability to create IT infrastructure that can service the edge very rapidly. Has that changed any of the value chains and the business practices of SAP? And how, how do customers out there, or your peers or CIOs out there, how should they think about those downstream edge points? Uh, specifically customer service and this, these other services. Definitely. Um if, if I see that this kind of, you know, technology is available, you know, and it, again, I want to stress it's, it's a combination of, you know, what's going on the hardware side, the, the, the multiple cores and the parallel processing and the, um, the, 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 the RAM and the, the pricing coming down like crazy, like we saw the last few months. And then also the, the software to, you know, looking at uh, compression at uh, column store, um, 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 uh, database, etc. The, the combination, that's the power package. So let me explain what I believe is, is, is in, the, in the pipeline. If, if you see that um, uh, from a customer service perspective, you have, you can um, predict from a, you know, if you um, consume a good uh, company, if you see uh, what will be a weather forecast for the next few days and, and you see the potential consumption go up and you can simulate with all the data for entire region or country and 
activate the supply chain. That's it's compelling. It's, it's, it's very uh, compelling. That's game changing. It's, it's I mean, game that, that's, you know? as Bill Major, that's game changing. That's game changing. <laughs> and you can do this on the fly. Or you, you run on the fly your profitability yeah. calculation that would maybe take days. That's a strategic, run. that's a, a yeah. good, that's another good argument for the strategic nature of IT yeah. because what you're talking about is from a savings optimization standpoint is significant. From a delivery new customer, you know, dealing with either existing customers and or securing new customers, that's, serving people in the trenches. That's like frontline guys on delivering business. You got to be nimble and you got strategic function yeah. there. And How then, could and IT be in a and silo? Then, and again, I think the key successor will be the orchestration. Because you have the, the records of system, you have the ability to process big data and then make them available through mobility. And I think the only company that can, really can do this is SAP. Okay, I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE.TV, the worldwide leader in tech event coverage. We're inside the cube with Oliver Boostman, the CIO of SAP, sharing his knowledge. He's a smart node. He's a tech athlete, as we call call it. Welcome. Uh, I mean, thank you for coming to the thank cube. You so much Appreciate for it, me, yeah. uh, Dave. I got to run.